Flavor City fam, what is up? It is Art and I in the kitchen for a really cool video we're about to do. I have an assortment of pots and pans in front of me. We're gonna do a video showing you when to use certain pans, how to cook with them, how to clean them, and how to care for them. Specifically, I'm talking about stainless steel pans, nonstick, both Teflon and ceramic, cast iron pans, Dutch ovens, because I always get questions about this. We've done videos kind of similar to this, but what's gonna make this really unique is I'm gonna tell you when each pan should be used, and to really reinforce that, I'm gonna do some recipes to show you that are ideal in each pan. Also, this video is sponsored by Tramantina. They sent me this uh, stainless steel Triply pan, triply pan. I can't, I can't say it. They sent me this triply stainless steel pan about a month ago, and I've been cooking in it left and right, and I love it. So let's get rocking and rolling with the stainless steel pan. I think this is one of the more underrated pans that a lot of home cooks either don't have or don't know exactly how to use it. And I have a great recipe for pork fried rice coming up in a minute. But what exactly is stainless steel? So this is the Tramontina stainless steel tri-ply pan, meaning tri-ply, there's three layers. There's two layers of 1810 stainless steel, and in the middle is a nice thick layer of aluminum. The cool thing about this pan is the aluminum is not only in the base here, it goes up to the sides here, which is really high quality. That's important because when you have a high quality pan like this, it doesn't have any hot spots. It doesn't uh, burn the food or cook unevenly, and it's super high quality. Now, this is great because it can handle high heat. You can go from the stovetop to the oven. So think about searing a steak or a pork chop, finishing it in the oven, making a really nice pork fried rice like we're gonna do right now. And unlike ceramic or Teflon, there's no coating on here. There's no Teflon, there's no ceramic there, there's no PFOAs, there's no PTFEs, meaning there's no harmful chemicals. You can scratch it and scrape it with any utensil you want, and the beauty is no matter how black this pan gets, and after the fried rice, it might get kind of black, you can scrub it, you can clean it, you can use a scouring pan and it always comes out looking brand new. And this works on any cooktop, gas, electric, induction, all that works. Perhaps the only food I wouldn't cook in the stainless steel pan is foods that uh, stick easily. So eggs, wouldn't do it in here. I prefer to do that in my ceramic nonstick pan, which we're gonna do in a couple minutes. Uh, if you're gonna cook a fish in here, like a salmon, you have to use a little more fat than normal. I'd probably still do that in the ceramic nonstick, but you have to put more oil in the pan. Either way, you'll see with this recipe, with the pork fried rice, it's a fantastic pan. You might see something on the market like this for easily 80 or or $100, and it's worth it, right? This pan's like $55. I've been using it, it's Bobby approved, it's fantastic. Use my promo link in the description box. I think everyone needs one of these in their kitchen, and you'll see why. Let's make the pork fried rice, which is delicious. Preheat your pan over medium heat. Add about one teaspoon of avocado oil. Then add one pound of ground pork. Keep in mind, you can also use ground beef or ground turkey or ground chicken. And then season with a pinch of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. Cook for about six minutes. You'll notice a lot of fat will come out of the pork. Add one teaspoon of finely grated ginger and mix it up. Then add three tablespoons of teriyaki coconut aminos and give it another mix. Cook it for about five minutes and then dump the pork onto a clean plate. And we'll keep using that pan for the veggies. So add some onions, celery, and carrots to the pan and cook it over medium heat for about six minutes. Add about one cup of cooked wild rice. I like the stuff from the packets, so it makes the recipe a lot quicker. Cook for another three minutes, then add another three tablespoons of the teriyaki coconut aminos, and cook for about five minutes so the sauce really cooks into the rice. Then add one egg that's been fried and chopped, and the cooked and reserved pork. Let's plate up some of that pork fried wild rice. And there it is. That's actually in the cookbook. That's in the cookbook. It's a nutrient dense, five ingredient wild rice fried rice because when we eat carbs here, we make sure they're complex. Uh, keep checking out the cookbook. So many people are buying it, you guys. It's a number one bestseller on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. Thank you for that. Um, let's check this out right here. I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I do. And if you don't want to use ground pork, you can use ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken. Absolutely fantastic. And that's a prime example when you want to use that beautiful tri-ply stainless steel pan from Tramontina. Snag it in the description box. This is fantastic. Make it. You're going to love it. Art and I are going to have a bowl and then we'll make a recipe and talk about the ceramic and the Teflon nonstick pan. 
Next up, let's talk about nonstick pans. We've actually done a video about nonstick pans before. There's two types of nonstick pans. There's Teflon coated nonstick pans, the kind of pans I used to use, and there's ceramic coated pans, the kind of nonstick pans I use now. Now, just to break it down very simply, if you're looking for performance, Teflon is better. Now they have banned some of the chemicals in here, but it still does have Teflon PTFE in it, which is why I'm not a huge fan. I'd rather you get ceramic nonstick. Ceramic is non-toxic and there's no Teflon in there. It's actually like hard sand on here. But because of that, it doesn't perform quite as well as the Teflon, but for me, I'm okay with that. Just keep in mind when you're using ceramic nonstick pans, the same ones I use at home, you really don't wanna go above medium heat because ceramic really warms up and gets hot and you tend to burn your food. And you do have to use a little more fat than you would with Teflon because this is more of a slick material. That being said, whether you're gonna use Teflon or ceramic, do not scratch it or chip it. Meaning when you're using utensils that have to be silicone, rubber, or wooden, as soon as you use something uh, metal and scratch the surface, if you're doing that with Teflon, that's how the chemicals can come out. But even if you're doing it with ceramic, that's how you ruin the surface and microchips get worse over time and that lessens the uh, non-stickability of the pan. They say you can put these in the uh, dishwasher. Actually, the uh, stainless steel pan is dishwasher safe too. I never put any pans in the dishwasher. Just scrub it yourself. Just make sure with all pans, never take a hot pan from the oven or from the stovetop and put it under cold water or really any water because you can uh, form thermal shock and it can warp the pan. They do that in restaurants, but it's because they're blazing speed in there. At home, let it cool down before you clean it. So knowing what you know now, I would go with cer ceramic nonstick pans and I'm gonna show you how to make a very easy traditional French omelet. Rose makes this with me about three days a week. It's perfect for the ceramic pan and this is how you do it. Start off by cracking three eggs into a bowl and preheat your pan just below medium heat and then whisk it really good. The more air you beat in, the lighter and fluffier the omelet's going to be. Season with a quarter teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of black pepper, and keep on whisking a bit more. Add a tablespoon of butter to the ceramic pan, then add the egg and allow to cook undisturbed until the edges set and then peel up the side of the eggs and tilt the pan. That way the runny yolk can go on the other side and cook evenly. Once the omelet looks pretty firm, to finish, fold it up in half on one side, then fold it in half on the other side. I'm using a silicone spatula. Allow it to cook another 30 seconds on that side. Gently flip and let it cook another 15 seconds just so the inside can set and then remove it from the ceramic pan. Just keep in mind when you're cleaning the nonstick pans, it's never gonna be that hard to get the stuff off of there, but never use something harsh and abrasive like the scouring pan I use to clean the uh, stainless steel. That'll take the uh, Teflon, the ceramic right off and put a big uh, scrape in there. So that's it, very, very easy. French omelet that Rose and I, she would have joined me, but she just got up from her nap. She was kind of cranky cause she's super hungry just showing down over there. But one of our favorite breakfasts. Okay, that's done. Let's move on. Oh, now she's here. <laughs> You're ready now because you just had your snack. Say hi to everyone, Rose. We just made the famous French omelet right there, okay? I'm gonna make a steak in the cast iron pan, then I'll bring you back so you can try that, okay? Come back in a minute. Okay, last but not least is the cast iron pan. We've talked about this in other videos too. There's really two kind of cast iron pans you have to concern yourself with. One is like this, that's enameled on the inside. Enameling is kind of like a glass-like substance or a surface that makes it non-stick, or you can get ones that don't have enameling. Uh, either way, the cast iron is great because once you get it hot, it really retains the heat well, and it will give you a very even cook on a steak like we're gonna make in a second. And you can start it out on the stove top to sear something like a steak, finish it in the oven. The longer you use it, the better it gets. Think about your grandma's cast iron pan. Maybe she's been using it for like <clears throat> 50 years and all that lard and butter has seasoned into the actual skillet, which is fantastic. Um, so without further ado, let's make a steak. And then afterwards, I'll show you how to clean this. It's easy, but if you have stuck on bits, you gotta go one step further. Either way, it's super easy. Preheat the cast iron pan just below high heat and then add a couple tablespoons of avocado oil and wait until the oil is really hot and just about smoking. Add the steak that has salt and pepper and then push down so the steak makes good contact with the pan. Put the splatter guard down and then set a timer for two minutes. 
we're doing the Cook's Illustrated method, but you do two minutes on the first side, flip, set the timer for another two minutes, and then after that, lower the heat down to medium and cook the steak for one minute on each side until it's done to your liking. And the thinking is that you'll have a nice even sear that doesn't go too deep into the meat and the crust gets really, really crusty and nice. <laughs> okay, Rose came out as soon as she smelled the steak. Looks good, it rested. Let's just cut it and then we'll talk about cleaning a cast iron pan, which could be a bit tricky. Of course, the steak rested for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Are you gonna cut it for us, Rose? <laughs> yeah, you need a shepherd. Daddy will do. I'm gonna use my knife here. How's that look, Rose, huh? Nice and medium rare. Yeah, it's warm. You can see the smoke coming out of there, huh? The steam. Beautiful. And we got a nice crust down there from the cast iron pan. There you go, sweetheart. Okay, cleaning of the cast iron pan. Take a look inside the pan, which is cool now. There's sticky bits on there like crazy, which actually is really good for making a pan sauce. The French would call it fond. Art would call it yum yums. I call them sticky bits, um, but to clean it could be a bit challenging. Here's what I do once the pan cools down because we never put a hot pan like that under warm or cold water. It could warp. Wow, Rose is loving it. All right, let's clean. Put the pan under really hot water. Let it run for a good minute. That should loosen up most of the crud on the bottom of the pan. Then use a sponge that doesn't have any soap in it and just wipe out all of the sticky bits. Let's say half of the time, it'll get clean with this method. If the pan doesn't get clean after the uh, washing in the sink, uh, fill it up with water and then boil that for about three minutes. Clean it one more time in the sink. And then because you might strip off some of the oil in the pan, I like to oil it so it dry the pan completely. Set it over medium heat for three minutes. The heat's gonna evaporate all of the excess water in the pan. Then put a half a teaspoon of avocado oil in there. Wipe it all around with a paper towel and a tongs to make sure our hands don't get burnt. And then cook it for three minutes until wisps of smoke come out of there. Then kill the heat and wipe out all of the oil. But it's very important that you wipe out all the oil. Otherwise, what's gonna happen, Art? You're gonna have bad news. You're gonna have bad news. The oil sticks to the surface of the uh, pan and it kind of messes it up and you have to re-season the cast iron pan, which is a pain in the butt. But uh, either way, one of those techniques is gonna work and the pan looks beautiful now. So same is true for uh, the Dutch ovens, but if they're enameled, you want to uh, make sure you don't scratch them with any uh, scouring pans, the same thing you would with a cast iron pan there. So my friends, Rose is a happy camper because we have pork fried rice, we have steak and everything. That's it, that's how to cook when to cook with certain pots and pans, how to clean them and how to care for them. And like I said, I'm a real fan of the uh, stainless steel tri-ply plan from, uh, God, I can't say it, Rose. Like I said, I'm a real fan of the tri-ply pan by uh, Dramantina. Rose needs some water in the description box down below. Check it out. But that's how you do all the things you do for your pans to make sure they work out the best for you. Uh, like, subscribe, share. The only way the channel keeps growing is by you spreading that Flav City love, including live streams when Rose cooks with me, Art and Desi come in, all that good stuff. But uh, two more videos are below us right now. For Roasty and Daddy, we leave you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking, mad love, and peace. Right, Rose? Daddy, let's say bye to everyone, Rose. Bye, everyone. No look. Look at you. Wow, girl.